Hands up, who loves campy 80s and 90s Hong Kong horror comedy films? And I mean the campy ones, not the super scary ones, because this movie is a clever and unexpected homage to the golden campy age of Hong Kong horror cinema. For example, the Shaw Brothers type stuff. And I thought this movie was a lot of fun. Hi, I'm the Arnie Dance from Asian Film Fans and welcome to this video where I'm going to take a look at Sugar Street Studio. A quartet of young movie prop creators are talked into setting up a haunted house style business by a movie producer in order to fund a future production and use the house as the set of a movie. The location of the haunted house is an old movie set that was destroyed in a fire after the actor in a clown costume burnt himself and an actress alive after she rejected him. After setting up the house and opening it to the public, the ghost of the dead actress begins to appear, turning the haunted house into an instant success. But she has a story to tell about her death, and eventually one night she gets to tell it, and the truth about how her and the clown died in the studio fire is revealed. I'm playing my cards early in this video because, quite frankly, I really enjoyed this film. There's a lot of charm buried within and is a nice surprise for anyone with a passing interest in the good old fashioned Hong Kong comedy horrors. I really loved the characters. From the dodgy, typical Hong Kong style movie producer to the quartet, the guilt ridden old actor and the two ghosts. Pierre especially. I couldn't help but think of Michael Hui's character Ah Hui from Chicken and Duck Talk, one of my favourite Hong Kong comedy movies. Pierre is the ultimate Scrooge, withholding payments, doing dodgy deals, always fabricating stories, but yet somehow always coming through for the quartet at the right time, for the right price. Going down the traditional Hong Kong horror route means we end up with a general low budget production. But I never felt at any time that that made the end product suffer. In fact, with its deliberately campy nature, the low budget aesthetic of the film isn't even really that noticeable. The ghost makeup looks pretty decent, and the CGI particle effects for the ash are a nice touch. As is the CGI used for things like when the ghost touches the box with the spell on it. In the 80s, they would have just added that effect to the negative, but now we get it in CGI. However, the effect isn't always there. As you can see with this long shot, that's devoid of the particles and smoke. I found the story to be fun to follow as well. There's a little bit of whodunit style mystery here, and although it's quite obvious what the ending's going to be, the journey to get there is enjoyable. And that's made that way with the humour. A very Hong Kong style humour. From sight gags that actually work, to jokes within the dialogue that hit the mark, I found myself laughing along more times than I thought I would. I love old Hong Kong comedy horror movies, and I love listening to the Cantonese language. And with solid, entertaining performances, an easy to follow mystery type storyline and a classic cameo or two from some familiar faces, and I think this was a real winner of a film. This is definitely not going to be the type of movie for everyone. Hong Kong comedy horrors are an acquired taste, but if you haven't acquired that taste yet and are looking for an easy entry into the genre, then you can safely start with this. It's a thumbs up from me. Any movie, regardless of genre or language, that can solidly entertain me for its whole runtime is worthy of a thumbs up, and this movie delivers. If you've seen this, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support the channel.